Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about normal distributions, which I'm sure you've heard a lot about in your AB stats class already, but here I'm going to try and clarify the what more some sorry, I'm going to clarify some information about the normal distribution because it's very commonly used in AP statistics, and you need to know everything about it because a lot of problems on the AP exam will talk about it, and it is a foundation for many more things we will do in AP stats. So let's begin, right? Here's some basic information about the oops, the standard. If I can find my stuff. The standard normal distribution curve, right? Well, there are a couple things we need to notice. It's got a bell shape. The normal curve is often called a bell curve. It's above the horizontal axis. That's kind of obvious. You're never going to find a curve in stats above below the horizontal axis. Very rarely you will. Um, that's not important. Oh yes, the transition points occur at the mean plus or minus the standard deviation, and this could be, you know, two or three standard deviations. But the point is, every n number of standard deviations in either direction, you get some critical value, and a little later on I'll show you what those critical values are. As with always, or any curves or distributions, probability is calculated by finding the area under the curve. You know, hopefully this phrase is ingrained into your head. Whenever you have a curve, probability is calculated by the area under the curve. Now here are two important facts. As the standard deviation increases, standard deviation increases, the curve flattening gets spreads out. Well, that makes logical sense, right? The bigger, I guess you would say, the average distance between data points is, you know, the the more pulled apart that curve is going to be, so the more flat and wide it's going to be. Now, when standard deviation decreases, just the opposite gets happen. It gets smooshed together. So let's take a look at a visual example. All right, here we have two normal curves, right? I know they both don't really look it, but they are both normal curves, right? And so, do they have the same mean? Well, the mean is going to be the point at which the distribution is centered, right? And that's right here, right? That's that's our mu, that's our mean. And what's that going to be? Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I apologize for my bad penmanship. I have yet to get a wake on tablet. But anyways, the mean is 6. Yes, they both are centered on the number 6. Oops. And which normal curve is a standard deviation of 3? So we have one that is stretched out really wide, that's B, and one that's stretched, that's really thin, that's A, right? And we know the curve with the bigger standard de deviation is going to be, be pulled farther apart. So that's going to be the standard deviation of 3, because that's greater than 1, and that's going to be curve B. See how wide it is? Um, so what's going to have a standard deviation of 1? Obviously the, the thinner curve. Well, let's move on. The empirical rule is an important rule that tells, that helps you gauge the probability based on certain information, or, in, or a pattern we notice with all normal curves, right? And is that 68% of the data, or there's 68% probability that your data falls within one standard deviation, I should say that's a one, standard deviation of the mean, right? And that 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean. And if you want to go even farther, which AP statistics will on occasion, 99.7 of the observations fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So knowing these facts, which you should memorize, by the way, it's only a quick memorization, will help us tell will very easily help us find probability statements and solutions to probability questions. Well, let's try an example, shall we? Suppose this, that the height of male students at um, Potato Senior High School is normally distributed with a mean of 71 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. What is the probability that the height of a randomly selected male student is more than 73.5 inches? Alright, now let's just, before we pull up any graphs, let's take a look at this. You have a mean of 71, and they're looking for a probability that the height is greater than 73.5, right? So the key is more than, so we're going to be looking for greater, right? So if I draw a curve, right, here's our normal curve, right? And here's the mean, you know, it should be 71, right? And they, and let's say, you know, here is 73.5, whatever, right? You want the area under the curve that's beyond that to find your probability. Well, what's the difference between 71 and 73.5, right? I should probably draw a bigger dot. It's one standard deviation. And we know that, and 
you might be jumping to the fact that, hey, one standard deviation, oh, it must be 68% between them, right? No, it's not, because it's 68% of the data falls in a one standard deviation in either direction, right? One standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right make up 68% of the data. All right. So we just need this area that's greater than 73.5. But the bell curve is symmetrical, so that helps us out. If we have the mean of 71, we only need this area over here, right? We only need this area in here. <coughs> we know that 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean. And because this area, these areas right here are going to be the same size, right? They're both one, their total is going to be 0.32, and we only need half of that. We can just divide by 2 and get the total. And that the probability of a student's height at Potato Senior High School being greater than 73.5 is only going to be, you know, 16%, 0.16. Simple enough, right? Well, let's move on. Now, because normal curves can all have different types of means and standard deviations, we need a way to compare it to a uniform standard, right? And so we get the standard normal density curve, right? And this is a curve with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And we can use this information as a standard comparison of all normal curves. Or, for example, let's say, or another thing we can do is make it much easier to find the probability when the numbers don't come out so cleanly. To standardize, and you must memorize this, I cannot stress this enough, you have to memorize this formula is that the z-score, that's what the z here is, the z-score, again, sorry for the bad penmanship, it's going to be your statistic, or your point value, it's going to be your data point, minus your mean divided by your standard deviation. And that'll tell you the z-score, which we can then use to find probability. So let's try an example with this. Again, haven't memorized Example, the lifetime of a certain type of battery is normally distributed with a... Okay, so here's your first clue, right? Normally distributed. So we can always think, already, we're going to be thinking normal curve. With the mean of 200 hours, that's what mu equals, and a standard deviation of 15 hours, right? And that's our standard deviation. What proportion of these batteries can be expected to last less than 220 hours? So, well, that's not quite one or two or three standard deviations, so we can't use the empirical rule. So we're going to have to resort to using our z-score to figure it out. We're going to have to compare it to the standard normal curve. All right? So what's our formula? Uh, well, here's a probability statement, right? So probability that they last less than 220 hours in this situation. So if this is where, let's see, if this is where 220 is, right? And the mean would be right there, that'd be mu. We would need all this area over here, all this red and blue area that I've shaded in so wonderfully. So we're going to need to create a z-score so we can look up the probability, right? 220 minus, so we take our data point, this would be our x, or whatever our statistic is, to, minus the mean, all over our standard deviation. And it gives us a z-score. And with this z-score, right, we can look up on a table, like on the, you'll give, be given a table with all these z values, right? And you can figure out the total area under the curve up to this z-score, right? So let's just take a look at the fact that it is positive, right? So that means your, it is, your data point or data value is to the right of the mean. If this value were, z, if this value, if your, z, if your z equals zero, you are at the mean. Sorry. At, you're at the mu, but if your z is negative, right, so let's say it was neg negative 1.33, if your z is negative 1.3, then what happens? Well, that's to the left, your your z-score, or your point on the standard curve is going to be to the left of the mean. I mean, those are technical things we'll come into later, but just know that the, being that this is a positive number, your, your z-score is presented to the right of the mean. And moving on to the more important stuff, once you have the z-score, you can look, go either, A, you can use your calculator method, which you can Google anywhere, or you can be given the table that you're going to use on the AP statistics exam, and you'll look up the z-score on this table, and it'll tell you the cumulative area up to 
your data point, not beyond it, only up to it. So it'll tell you, drawing your tangent of expectation, all this area right here up to your data point. Oh, I seem to have colored all over it. Let me get my eraser. But using our table, we can look up the z-score value, and we can find, hey, look, 90.82% of the area falls behind that value. So 90, or so 0 0.9082 is the proportion we can expect to be less than 220 hours. So let's try another problem. The lifetime of a certain type of battery is normally distributed with a mean of 20, 200 hours and a standard deviation of 15 hours. How long must the battery last to be in the top 5%? Now, if something's in the top 5%, that means your... The, oh, crap. Sorry. If something's in the top 5%, that means 95% of the data must fall behind it, right? But we need a specific value. We only need this area here, right? This would be where, I guess, the 0.95% of the data falls. <coughs> now, just for the sake of consistency, we're just going to continue using our formula, right? Once again, I've colored over everything. Anyways, um, we're going to continue using our formula, right? But here, we, knew, we are going to look up on the table, and we're going to look at the table and see, hey, wait. 95% of the data, cumulative, represents a, presents a z-score of 1.645, right? We got that from looking at what the table provided to us by the AP Statistics people. And we plug in the information we know. We have the mean and the standard deviation, and we can solve for x, which is how long a battery must last to be in the top 5%, which is 224.675 hours. All right, and that brings the end to this video. If you have any questions or feel like raging at me for being a bad tutor or want to compliment me for being a good one, leave it in the comment section and I'll get to you.